Hello again, this is Jax911 and this is part 7 of my PC build series and in this part I'm going to be connecting all of the cables. Now the first cables I'm going to, to connect are going to be the power cables just so I know I can get them out of the way. So the first thing is to get out of the way the front panel <coughs> cables like so. And then the first cable I'm going to connect is the main cable and this is the 24 pin motherboard cable some older motherboards are also 20 pin but this one's 24 pin so they only go around one way so we'll locate which way around it goes we're looking at the connector I found out this one goes around this way so we slide it in like So, sometimes it's easier if you do have a 24 pin to do the 20 pin and then put the 4 pin one in afterwards. So that is the 24 pin connector in. The next one also goes into the motherboard and this is a 4 pin connector <coughs> which you can see here. Now this 4 pin connector goes into the top of the motherboard. I'm not quite, you can just about see, it goes in here, just here. So, it'll connect that in, like that, and it should sort of clip on. <coughs> so that one clicks in. And then the next power leads we've got to connect are for the drives. So these drives are both serial, serial ATA drives, or SATA drives. So, first one we're going to connect is the hard drive. So this is a serial ATA connector here, quite flat one. So we look at which way it goes up, and it goes up this way. And you may notice that at the minute this all looks very, very untidy, but don't worry, I'm going to do another video showing you all the cable management of this case, as we want the circulation to be the best we can possibly make it. And at the minute, I can't get this to go on. There we go. Right, so that's the first hard drive in. And the next one is a disk drive, another serial ATA connector. Make sure you know which connector you need because some older drives you still use some 4 pin Molex, which looks like this. But the only thing we're going to be using this for is if I decide to put a floppy drive in. Actually, we won't be using that because they're not for floppy drives, I'm sorry that, about that. Um, for fans, I'm sorry I was meant to say. So, we plug the disk drive power supply in. So sorry if you can't see this, but I'll try to show you at the end of the video. Everything plugged in. I believe that's plugged in. Right, so at the minute, oh, and of course the fan, which we'll find the easiest connector to plug it into. It looks like it's actually this one. And we'll make sure it's up the right way. And we'll plug that in like that. So that's all the power leads plugged in. It does look a mess, but we'll be sorting that out soon. So the next thing I'm going to connect, just to make it slightly easier, is all the front panel connectors. Now, quite handily on Asus motherboards, they have <coughs> Of all the front panel can just go into one pin. So hold on a second while I get that connector for you. So now I've got the front panel connector out of the Asus motherboard. Here we are. So all your front panel cables clip onto this and it's quite handily labelled for you, unlike lots of other motherboards where you just have to look at the instruction manual and find out where to put them on. So the first thing I'm going to look at, you can't see this, but they're all labelled on there. Uh, power SW, so power switch. LEDs, HDD, so hard drive LED, and reset SW reset switch. So we find the power switch and we look on here for <coughs> power. There it is. I'm not sure which way around it goes, that's the only problem. I believe white is probably ground. It doesn't matter though because you can't damage it. Switches, if you put them on the wrong way, just won't work. And although I, can't, I think switches, if you put them on the wrong way, doesn't actually make any difference. LEDs, if you put them on the wrong way, doesn't. They just won't work. You don't have to worry about frying them or anything. So reconnect the reset switch. 
and then we have the hard drive light which is here hard drive LED connects onto here and then the two other switches and the last two are power LEDs now these two aren't actually connected together they're separate so you have to look on them which one's positive and which one's negative so we turn this around and we have power LED positive which is the green one I believe so we're going to slot that on like so and power LED negative which we're also going to slot on right so that's all the front panel connectors and the other thing which we have to connect onto this little thing sorry if you couldn't see that um, is the speaker for the motherboard, the PC speaker and this, this is the thing which beeps when you turn on your computer to tell you that everything's either okay or there's a problem so we'll just get that, This I think the case normally comes with them so we'll put this on I actually don't know which way around it goes I honestly don't know but the red is probably the 5 volts so we'll slide that on like that and then we have the PC speaker and then we have the speaker attached and then this whole assembly connects on to the motherboard at the very bottom which once again very sorry but you probably won't be able to see this connects on to the bottom like so and it makes it makes your job a whole lot easier so the rest of the front panel connectors we have are audio and USB so the USB on this motherboard is down at the bottom here and I believe that I'll try and see on the bottom of the case USB 10, 78, 12 I actually don't know which one it's supposed to go on but I'm imagining it probably goes into the end one. I'm sure it can't do any harm so plug it in. Once again refer to your motherboard's manual so that you know which connector you're actually meant to be plugging them onto <coughs> because all motherboards are different and I will be checking the motherboard's manual afterwards before I boot up the computer just to make sure that I have actually got it on the correct hole so the last one from the front is your audio in this case sports HD audio or the old AC97 so we're going to use HD audio which is on this motherboard in a place where I don't actually know there it is I believe but as I don't want my computer to get damaged I may just refer to the manual right so I'm back again I've referred to my manual and I found out that my USB connector was in the wrong place so I've corrected that so just make sure you look in your manual although it's boring you've got to you know make sure everything's in the right place and I also found out that the audio does go in this place so we look for the missing connector there's always like one missing pin and I'm just going to untangle it from the rest of them because it's quite a short lead and just plug it into the board and make sure I have seen it happen before that you don't just get one row of connect like pins into the connector make sure that it's fully in and connected right so all we've got left to do now is two more cables which are data cables from the hard drive and the optical drive which I've taken out the packet and these are one which have quite handily come with the motherboard and their SATA connection cables so <coughs> the first one we've got to put on is the hard drive it doesn't really matter what order you do it in but I like to do it in this order so we'll tuck it up and make sure we know which way round it goes and click it into the hard drive and then pull these cables out of the way. Like I said, I'm going to do some cable management of these cables later. I'm only just roughly putting them in so that I can actually try out everything and make sure it works. So pull those, pull that through there. 
and I'm going to connect it to SATA 1. So it doesn't really matter which one you connect it to, but I am going to connect it to this one. So SATA 1 is that connection there, like here. So we click it into the motherboard like that. And then the other sort of data cable we have to put in is for disk drive. So once again, make sure it's the right way up. And then I know you can't actually see this, but I'm going to connect it in to the back of the drive. It clicks in. And the same as the other one, I'm going to pass it down the back of these power cables. Make sure it's all untangled. And then plug it into SATA 2. And once again, it probably doesn't really matter which one you actually plug it into, but I'm going to do it this way anyway. And that should click in like that. So now, that is all of your computer, internally anyway, wired up. And I just wanted to show you what it looks, inside, looks like inside the case. The first one, there is the audio down here, this connector here. The USB, I found out I had to put into this connector here. Front panel connectors all go onto here. And then we've got the fan, Molex connector, 4 pin Molex. We've got the back of the drive, sorry about the poor light conditions, but we've got the SATA data cable and the SATA power connector. Exactly the same with the optical drive, data, no, data and power. And then make sure the CPU fan is plugged in for when you actually fire up the computer and that the motherboard has power which is this one here and then you've got the 24 pin connector here and that is about it for inside of the case so it's been Jack Snowman 1 and thank you very much for watching